back in the house again. Thank you all for the 10 years of Radio Man. We had a great time with Gina Six and Trey Bob. We still got that business to handle. Got some nonsense going on down there in Sanford, Florida, but we're going to see it through. Thank you all for supporting the president for two elections, man. We made it happen twice. It's a big deal. Let me, uh, before I get into a, a few things that I want to say, I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I'm going to say something about me. Uh, as far as radio goes, people are like, what happened? Why was it so abrupt? You have to understand, whenever you give a black man a microphone, he's not moving folks to march and all around the country and voting and taking care of business. It's always going to be an issue. But I was prepared for this a long time ago. I knew I couldn't have this big an impact on a community, have this big an impact on families, have this big an impact on entrepreneurship, because all I tried to do with that microphone was to promote as much positivity and to promote as much business and health as I could before I was there today. So even though it happened very abruptly, I was prepared for it. I got a lot of options. Obviously, I took care of myself. One of the things that I need to tell you all about is make sure you take care of yours so nobody can control you. When it's time for you to go, you tell them adios. And I'm going to move on to what is next. Or as Hooper like to say, the next chapter. And you have to be prepared for that. All the men in here right now had a very interesting experience over the last uh, weekend. As you all know, I still, some of you may know, I'm on Facebook every day, all day, on Beige and Live. And I posted some comments about Happy Father's Day. Something you would think would be relatively easy to put out there. Happy Father's Day, Happy Father's Day week. And the response from the women was very heavy. Now, mama get all love in the world. Mama deserve it. I don't hate on moms. My mother raised three kids as a single parent and did a great job. But when women start promoting Father's Day cards on, for mothers on Father's Day, I understand the principle behind it, but let's not devalue the importance of positive male role models. We need our men. And thank you, you only can your future. That's right, I said it. You may not need a man, but your kids do need a positive male role as I said, I understand the idea behind it, but you can't knock every man because the man you chose. <laughs> I'm proud of you all for being here for your kids. I'm proud of you all being here 
for the ladies, and I'm proud of you all being here for the community because there were a lot of men in Gino, Louisiana. There were a lot of men marching for Trayvon. There were a lot of men who got out there and voted. We don't get half the credit we deserve, but that's all right. Real men understand that. We just keep taking care of business and keep going. That's what we do. That's how we roll. We know the pattern of that ain't coming. We know. We already know. You know, the restaurants ain't packed on Father's Day. You can't get a seat on Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. You can't wait for week. Another issue that I, I really like to talk about on the show, we had a series called Your Body is Your Temple. And man, if you guys will stop being too cool to get a prostate examination. I know it ain't cool. But you don't want to die trying to be cool. I mean, one of the most preventable diseases there is, is prostate cancer. And that idea of going to the doctor, I'm going to get grabbed. That idea of going to the doctor and having to put the glove on, have you been over you all sensitive? Have you been very good at testing? Man, let me tell you, you ever see anybody die of prostate cancer, dude? That coolness just go right out the window. That's devastating. We don't have enough grandfathers because of that cancer. We need granddad. You know, the one resource that we have, even if we don't have all the money in the world, although I think we're doing pretty well financially, we could be doing better. But the biggest resource we have as men is our knowledge, man. It's our experience. I'm 50 years old next week. That time rolls up on you real fast. But 50 now is not 50, 20, 30 years ago. You can still look good and feel good and be in the best shape of your life as you get older. 50 is a new 30. I think it's up on that tree. Women ain't only going to throw a plane on that young stuff. We don't get some young stuff. I shaved Gray out a little bit. So what? So what? But I'm in the best shape of my life. Literally, when I went to the doctor, my blood pressure is better than ever, my endurance is better than ever. You don't have to start declining at, at 50 years old. Now I watch a few of the brothers with some ham on their plate. Eat the pig and smile. I bite down with a rib out of nine minutes. I tear a rib out of what? I slave one. But I died as key, fellas. I died as essential. Having to meet with everything. Everything. Meat for breakfast, meat for lunch. Some people ain't seen nothing green on their plate unless it's green Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta eat right, man. We gotta last a long time. We, we wanna be here for, for many years. I don't know if any men in my family last past 80 to 70 when I sit here and think about it right now. You know how much knowledge there is that's been missed when a grandfather is gone at 60, 65 years old? You know, you get to collect their Social Security. I'm sticking around just to get my money back. <laughs> I'm just being right. I want to get paid. I saw the uh, Omega Brothers out there. I'm sure the captain's in the house. And, Alpha. Uh, Alpha. Oh, Alpha. Man, calm down, bro. I'm trying to get home, man. <laughs> Let me tell you the one thing that I learned from, from the frats. Before I learned it from Big Brothers Big Sisters, who I now work with in 100 Black Men and Susan Taylor's National the fraternities and sororities, man, you all been on the ground a long time with this mentor. I started when Darion Albert, a few years ago, got beat to death in my hometown of Chicago. When they beat that boy to death with that tire rail, that track rail, I said, you know what, there's one thing to talk about it. And so I got on the bus and traveled around to 77 cities, about 70 cities, I guess, donated about uh, half a million dollars of my money. See, we don't have to wait on the man. We don't have to wait on the government. The government's not going to help these kids, man. Are you kidding me? The government didn't help me. I'm not scared of the government. You think I'm standing here from the south side of Chicago with a 14 year old mother with three kids because of the government? You must be crazy. I'm here because guys like you, somebody stepped up and helped me out and gave me some direction, man. In fact, it was a guy who owned a bookstore on the west side of Chicago that turned me on to reading. And once I started picking up those books, he kept turning me on to more books. I was going to three or four books a week. Cherry McMillan hit the scene, waiting to exhale. My love of reading kicked in. I started writing, and the rest is history. But that came from a man. All it takes is one man to change the direction of another man's life. 
It really is that simple. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a black man. So, I don't know if you make around women, women doing everything they can. They're the number one mentors out here. There's more women mentoring boys than men. There's more white men mentoring black boys than black men. One minute. That's right, I said. One minute. One minute. Mike. That has to stop. That's not cool. So for all the men and why stepping up regardless of your race, had a woman call to the show and say she didn't want a white man into her black side, I'm like, you out of your mind. Whoever steps up to help our kids, we're going to take that help. But we're going to make sure we're the first one to step up and it should be. Last but not least, on relationships, I'm going to be out here in 30 seconds. The most important thing for us as men to understand and what changed my life and what really got everything on path for me is a word that was rarely used when I was coming up, and that was integrity. That's why a lot of us can't step up to be leaders because there's some secret or some business we didn't handle in our past that prevent us from stepping up to the microphone because we're worried about some crazy woman or some crazy man <laughs> popping up in the audience saying you got me pregnant or something crazy. <laughs> Handle your business. Make sure you resolve all your issues, man, because when you want to leave, people are going to come after you. They're going to pull out every skeleton you can possibly imagine. So I took care of all my business before I stepped on this national stage, and I'm not done yet. Thank you all for the 10 years. we got more work to do. i got more love and respect for you all than you can imagine. Thank you all for the support. Enjoy the rest of the event, and I'll see you guys back on radio, TV, and the street somewhere. Thank you, guys. Thank you all.